Howdy guys, I just woke up. This is like the 50th time I've recorded this or attempted to record this into a uh, video. So I, po I apologize <laughs> if I seem tired and exhausted of talking about this subject because actually I am really tired and exhausted about talking about this. But I'm going to, I think I got it this time. I think I'm gonna get this right. I'm not gonna edit it. I'm just gonna go through half of my art. That was the mistake I made at the first time I recorded this was I tried to do all of this. Like literally, this is my D drive on my computer. Um, it is a removable hard drive that I have that has all my art. So I'm gonna go today, I'm only gonna go through 2015 uh, and then back into 2008. So we'll start at the beginning and then we'll go onward. If for any reason you are feeling bad about your art today, this is a great video for you to watch because my art was not the hottest for a long time as everyone else's we all start from somewhere and i certainly started from somewhere that's for sure but i think it's important as an artist that you keep a hold of all your work a lot of this art i just photographed recently and it's still sitting in my room but i wanted to photograph it and put it in a hard drive that way i had it as i go on with my life <laughs> rather than leaving it in my parents. I'm sorry, I just woke up, so I'm gonna like sip my tea. I'm gonna try to keep this as chill as possible because my art from 2008 to 2015 is pretty chill. I might as well just get started with it though. And there's a lot for me to talk about with this stuff. Uh, I'll put it on like small icons or something. Well, I guess that didn't work, but I'm gonna try to go in order of how I created these, but at some point that's going to be lost on me. I just remember this order because this is when I first started drawing, so I know the order that these were made in. This is my first drawing that I have photographed. Sorry, I got like something in my eyeball. <laughs> oh, what is that? It's schmutch from me uh, sleeping, sleeping in. I slept like 12 hours last night. Anyway, this is a drawing that I did in 2007. Dates on the folder are wrong. Maybe we'll fix that. And this is a drawing of a cat that I had that passed away when I was a kid. <laughs> Very depressing, sad story, but um, I drew the cat as an angel and yeah. So this is like my, this is the base. I was seven or eight years old at the time, in case you needed that for reference. Uh, this is the base of where my art began. <laughs> But this isn't really where I, where my art began, I, you'll see. Because at this point I'm just a kid drawing. I'm like in the second or third grade maybe. Maybe first grade. So I think this will go in this order. Yeah, okay, so 2008, maybe 2009, I don't know. The years could be wrong. I know that I dated them later. You can also see the, the after image of the previous drawing behind it because it's really like thin um, lined paper. So this is a drawing of Lionheart. <laughs> I was a really big Warrior Cats fan at the time when I was a kid. In elementary school and a little bit into middle school, I was a big Warrior Cats fan. Kind of lost it on me in high school and late middle school. I sort of gave up with reading it. I was moving on to bitter, bigger and better things, which you'll see later in this video. But this drawing, I remember I sat down and I, and I was reading in class. Shh, don't read in class, kids. Listen to the teacher talk. I was reading, I think it was Blue Star's Prophecy, pretty sure. And in the back of that book is like uh, the Warrior Cats manga or comic. They call it a manga, I think. I don't know if they still do, but they used to. And I finished Blue Star's Prophecy, and I flip to the last few pages of the book, and I see this manga, and I go, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I was super fascinated by the fact that someone had come in and drawn this comic for the Warrior Cat series, and I was really fascinated with the art style in particular and everything. Up until that point, I don't think I knew that that was like a possibility. I didn't read many comics when I was a kid or anything so I think the uh, shock of seeing that art was very deep on me because that exact day I had decided that I wanted to be an artist for the rest of my life I was like oh my gosh 
if this guy is sitting here and drawing these cats for the warrior cats manga and that's his job that's what i want to do i was i, I was so fascinated with it so i while i was sitting there in class i took out my loose leaf paper and I drew, <laughs> I just drew what I was looking at, really tiny drawings in the back of this book, and I drew them on big loose leaf paper. And here's Lionheart, I love Lionheart. Uh, so a few of these are that. Uh, for example, Firestar was the one that I drew right after that. I remember this. I don't know why I remember this so vividly. I think because it was such a turning point as an artist for me. I was like, oh, yo, I could do this. I could draw cats, a cat comic for a living. Granted, that changes eventually in my life, but uh, it was a good start for me to just say, oh man, that's so cool. And I was always fascinated with the art style of the Warrior Cats manga, and I think a part of me still is. I still really like the style that they do it in. As much hate and slack as it gets, I don't know why it gets all that slack. It's very stylistically nice. So after that, um, <clears throat> something hits me here, right here. This drawing is different from the other two because I had access to the internet. Whoa, in 2010, I was on the internet. I remember I was on, I think my dad's computer or something, and maybe my mom's. I don't think my dad would let me use his computer. It's probably my mom's. And I went on the Warrior Cats website, which I was on quite frequently in my early days on the internet. I was always on the Warrior Cats website and that website was so weird because when you would go on, when you would go on it every every time you visited it, it would jump scare you with like these cats fighting, like this loud sound and scary visual. It was so weird. I'm like, why do they do that? I would always be nervous to open up the Warrior Cats website, and I remember not wanting to visit the website because. Um, it was scary. You'd click on the website and it would jump scare you. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but something just in the in the back of my memory. So I would often be on the forums, but at the time on the Warrior Cats website, I don't know if it's still there or not, obviously, but at the time they had a how to draw gray stripe tutorial from the manga artist that does Warrior Cats. I say manga, it's really a comic. It's not a manga, but I've, I've been calling it a manga my whole life. <laughs> so the Warrior Cats manga artist did a tutorial on how to draw gray stripe. And that is the tutorial that I followed to do this drawing. And I think it came out quite well. Um, imagine using reference like makes you good, doesn't it? <laughs> You could really tell, uh, I've learned things from this drawing <laughs> as, a, as a little kid, but then it all goes, flush it down the toilet when I draw this uh, horrific beast here. I'll like move it over here. Yeah, so this one has a story behind it too. <laughs> all the drawings from this era, I like kind of remember what happened or what I was doing when I drew them because, you know, this was the very beginning of me as an artist, like figuring it all out. And this drawing in particular, I drew it for a very specific reason. So at the time, this cat is an original character, but not so original because the cat that I drew here, if you could call it a cat, <laughs> is based off of a cat from my town, the stray cat that used to walk around. He wasn't a stray actually, he had owners, he was just indoor outdoor. and. Uh, yeah, I based this character off of that cat because at the time I was writing a book called Dark Path, which it says right there. When I was nine, I finished writing this book. It was kind of like a warrior cat's ripoff and also written by a nine-year-old. <laughs> so I wrote it and this, he, Eddie here is a part of that book. Uh, let me know if you want me to read that book here on on YouTube or something because I actually still have it and it is a finished book. I don't know how I don't remember how long it is, but I could do a read aloud of it and it would be probably really cringy. So yeah, this is also like I I actually did a lot of these side view drawings when I was around this age, which nine years old maybe. And a lot of them I don't know where they are. But that's okay, it happens. Sometimes you just don't know where these drawings go. So I did a lot of these side view head shots and 
of cats, but they kind of look like dogs sometimes because the nose is really long, but that's okay. I'm just a kid. So that's it for 2008 to 2011, which I really think is 2008 to 2000, 2007 to 2009, but that would really mess up my order of these folders. <laughs> so maybe I'll just leave it as that and just let it happen. <laughs> So as I come out of that year, um, things change very quickly, as you'll see here. This is kind of like, I'm a kid, I'm in elementary school, just bopping around, and then 2012 hits, and suddenly it's like digital art. <laughs> so prepare for that, um, because there's a lot to talk about here when it comes to why I started doing digital, and also what these drawings are for and where they were posted online. I feel like I'm doing a, like a, what are those draw my life videos? But I'm not drawing, instead I'm showing you drawings from the time that I drew them to tell you a bit about my life. So a bit about my life here. <laughs> this is my first digital drawing and I say that with legitimacy because I remember drawing it on MS Paint when, on my mom's computer, I did not, ha I still didn't have a computer at the time. At the time that I drew this, I think I just learned about Scratch, the website. So if you don't know what Scratch is, Scratch is a programming learning website run by MIT. And when I was a kid, I really wanted to post on somewhere like DeviantArt or whatever, play video games online with people, but obviously I was like 11, 10 or 11 or 12 years old around that area, and it really wasn't a possibility for me to do that as someone that young, you know, my parents would definitely not let me. I was not allowed on like YouTube or anything at this time, that's for sure, so the draw would scratch, and I think a lot of other artists of my age range in this time was that Scratch is a website run by MIT. So what you do is you go up to your parents and you say, hey, mom and dad, or mom and mom, or dad and dad, or whatever. Uh, I <laughs> Scratch, you know, the, the website, Scratch, it's run by MIT and it teaches you how to program and make games and, and code websites and whatnot. And that's how you that's how you get them you say it's educational and it is educational that's what scratch is meant for but uh it just so happened that a lot of people went on who went on scratch at the time and it's not i don't know if it still is that way or isn't anymore but a lot of people that went on scratch at that time were kids that were warrior cats fans that were looking for somewhere to post their warrior cats animations and drawings online that wasn't deviant art because deviant art is scary and evil the word deviant is in it so they're not gonna let me on that so i posted this to scratch that's the backstory here so all these drawings are from scratch this is an original character and yeah you could tell from the start that my digital art has an automatic focus on line art I never took a painterly approach ever, so <laughs> that still reads true for my art, and you'll see my line art slowly evolve in my coloring and whatnot over time. I'm trying to go in order. I think these are in order, actually, so. Here's another scratch, uh, scratch era drawing of mine. Yeah, man. This is also an original character. I remember, I don't, I think this might be a character from my book. Actually, the previous character might be too. I don't remember because I haven't read the book <laughs> in like, I don't know, like however many years, probably like 10, 12 years or so. So, but here's a character that I had and I remember I really liked this character. And when I was a kid, I would often do art trades with other people on Scratch. To draw this character, I wanted them to draw this character in particular. So yeah, very female character. Look at those eyelashes, and you could really tell here that like I avoid drawing arms and legs on my cats. I just can't figure out anatomy, and I wasn't using reference or anything. I was just a little child on, on Scratch. I never really animated though. That's one of the things I didn't do. I never really animated on Scratch or anything. Uh, so the character on the left is mine, the character on, on the right is someone else's. I don't remember who they are, I don't remember what this was for, but if you know 
this person or you are this person. Hello. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Hope you're doing okay. <laughs> but I know that this is my character on the left. And I know that this is, I think, 90%, 80% sure that this is also a character from my book. I was like, a, I, for a moment there, I abandoned the Warrior Cats franchise for my own franchise. I stopped making Warrior Cats art because I had my own characters and my own uh, universe worked out already. <laughs> So I totally did I totally ditched uh, Warrior Cats for this cat and all the other associated cats. <laughs> I don't know if my book was good or not, guys. I just uh, I have, I can't remember, but I do know this was a character and as you can tell, I'm still avoiding drawing the arms and legs and the feet and whatnot. Kind of funny. So yeah, this was on script. Oh my goodness. What did I just do? I just closed all my tabs. Hold on. I didn't close them. I just minimized them. That's scary. There we go. Okay, that was weird. Anyway, back at it again. I actually draw some paws here, some legs and arms. I like this drawing, and I remember I really liked this drawing when I drew it too. And look, I used like shading here. Check that out. It's very pixely, but I did. I used some kind of brush, and I think that's because I drew this in in GIMP. Don't a hey, non artists. If you're watching this, do not come at me about the word GIMP. That's a drawing software. Um, I don't know what is up with drawing programs calling themselves weird names. Like we have, you got GIMP and then you got Procreate and you got freaking DeviantArt as a website and, and a whole, why, why do they call it? Why, where are these names coming from? I don't know, but when I was a kid, I didn't under. I was like, "Gimp's such a cool word." But anyway, I drew this on Gimp, and Gimp was the first drawing program that I used that wasn't MS Paint. So, very awesome. And this is not a character of mine. I definitely drew this for someone. I don't know who they are anymore. I did know when I was around that era. My signature is like insane, but. Yeah, if you are this person, hi. <laughs> Hello again. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, yeah, I drew this on GIMP. So that was the first time I ever got a drawing software. And I think I might have gotten a laptop at this point. Or I think I had my laptop at this point, my first laptop. If I was in middle school, I probably did because I joined a robotics team and I needed a laptop to code and do other stuff and my mom needed her laptop so I just got my own. Spent my little monies that I had and bought a really bad but okay laptop that could run GIMP and other stuff. So yeah there, there's a first drawing on probably a new laptop. I don't know this might have came before or after the previous one. They could be in the wrong order at this point. It's not something that I remember. I don't know who Rain Paw is. I have a feeling this isn't a character of mine. I have a feeling it's not a character of mine. It could be a character of mine, but I have a feeling that it's not because I don't I don't think I would ever name my warrior cat OC Rain Paw as a kid. I was looking for more badass names, of course. But I, I drew the tongue sticking out here. There's a few artistic tropes you see here, like the tongue sticking out and the nose, little the, the little nose bridge. Those are repeating um, themes in my art in the future. But you could tell I'm kind of getting better here, I guess. It's really hard to see the improvement here because uh, the art is not very good. But once I get to the next year, I think it's going to look really different to you guys. And I like the file names that I did for these. I organized all these recently. As you could see, it says rainpaw underscore illustration underscore final. When I was moving these files over onto my hard drive, I was like, do I give them the file names that I'm using for my professional art? Like, I wanted to keep it all organized and similar, but I just think it's really funny that I titled it like that as if it was some really big, impressive piece when it's not. <laughs> Anyway, that's Rainpaw. Uh, if you know them, hello. If you are them, hello. 2013, I, I go back to my roots and I'm on traditional. And I know for certain these were posted on DeviantArt and not Scratch. Which might be the reason why they're traditional, but I can't be certain. 
Uh, sometimes I go through these phases where I'm like, oh, digital sucks. I'm going to switch back to traditional. I'm terrible at digital. My traditional art is so good. And I had, I, I was going through those phases in and out for like a long time. But now I think I, I like am comfortable with both enough that I'm not wanting to like pick one over the other. It doesn't make much sense to me to do that. Anyway. Uh, we'll start from the back and work our way frontwards. Whoops, I don't know why that opened over there. Because I think this is the order that it's supposed to go in. A note about this drawing is that uh, I referenced... This is, a, this is like a master study. <laughs> this is like my first master study. Some, my, someone, I think my guidance counselor bought me a book. And you know it's, you know you're like... You know your life is, is gonna be a strange one when your guidance counselor buys you a self-help book while you're in like third or fourth grade because that's when I received the book. I remember that. My guidance counselor in like third or fourth grade, it's so loud outside, bought me a self-help self -help book. And this was a drawing that was in it. And I think that's so funny that someone bought me a self-help book when I was that young, cause it's like, don't you see there's a problem here? But no, no one, no one. Uh, it w she was a great guidance counselor anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't remember her name or anything, but she was pretty cool. I do remember that. And school that I was in was a little messed uh, when it came to mental health services and whatnot. But anyway, so this is a master's study. I referenced a drawing and drew that drawing and I used colored pencil and I think my colored pencil technique isn't that bad here. So, yeah, that's that. Where are we, 2013? Okay, so I'm like 13 or 14 here. I'm probably like 13. Uh, most of the year I'm, I'm the age of the year, but sometimes that changes. <laughs> here, okay, here's a character of mine that you're going to see a lot more as we go on. The character's original name was Miss Remix and that's because I liked I liked YouTube Nightcore remixes when I was a kid. <laughs> I said this was gonna be like a cringy video but also I'm just a little kiddo so why are you gonna blame me for it? I'm not into this stuff now but I was. Anyway also, uh, a bipedal. <laughs> this is a this is a furry drawing for sure. I don't know if I knew what a furry was when I drew this or had already figured it out. I remember discovering what a furry was while I was playing like Feral Heart. Someone told me and was like, "Oh yeah, I'm a furry." And I was like, "What the hell is that? Like, what are you talking about?" And then I YouTubed it and immediately was like, oh, this is sick. And I don't really make much furry art anymore. You'll see it slowly phase out. Not in this video though. This entire video, which is part one of this hard drive tour, is absolutely riddled with furry art. It doesn't go away until much later. Anyway, yeah, this is traditional. I did this with Sharpie. I couldn't afford nice markers, but look at how nice the Sharpie looks. I have to say, the Sharpie looks fine. I don't see what the big deal is with, against Sharpie for art. Tons of artists use Sharpie. What's the big deal? Yeah, I think I definitely knew what a furry was. I was on DeviantArt, so there was no way I didn't know what I was doing here. I had to have known. <laughs> I was also really into steampunk at the time, and I used to make my own steampunk like props and, and whatnot. It was really just a side hobby of mine at the time, but I remember going to Comic-Con, probably in 20, 2012 or 2013, Comic-Con. I went to Comic-Con a lot uh, as a teenager. So I went to Comic-Con at some point, probably 2012, and I discovered steampunk at Comic-Con. I was like browsing the Artist Alley or whatever and saw steampunk clothing and merchandise and whatnot and I was very interested in it. I really wanted to be a part of that so I got really into steampunk at this time. Um, I don't really uh, you know I don't, I'm not a big steampunk person anymore though but it's neither here nor there. Sorry I just tried to move my camera because I 
I like the backdrop that you guys were seeing. It's not a, it's not messy back there. It's just a lot of snack food sitting out. I'm in a college dorm, so <laughs> it's like, uh, this is kind of annoying. But now you guys could see my shoes. Although maybe that's a good thing. You guys see my shoes and you say, oh, that's great. Apostrophe takes off their shoes when they enter their dorm. I don't track dirt around. <laughs> I'm not a monster. <laughs> Speaking of monster, uh, ta -da. <laughs> here's a character that I had at the time. His name was, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna choke. His name was Forrester because he, sorry, my upstairs neighbors are insane. His name was Forrester because he likes trees and he's called, he's, he's green and brown, I think, so. He looks like a tree. He's like part alligator monster character. And he's massive, as you could see, he's holding like a tree. So he's supposed to be huge. And yeah, still Sharpie. I don't see any any problem with drawing in Sharpie. People, Sharpie haters all over the world can square up because in my opinion, Sharpie looks fine. Especially when you can't afford really expensive tools. Sharpies are still kind of costly too. Just finished my tea, so it's officially the start of the day. Exciting. I'll probably stream today. Um, uh, today's October 1st. Start of Inktober. Might make a video on that. Anyway, that's Forrester. Uh, he, I might draw him again. A lot of the drawings from this point onward are lost to time or to the internet or in my room somewhere. I just couldn't find them. So this isn't all my art from this year. It is just all the art that I managed to gather from this year. So I apologize that it's not all there, but I think it's still enough to kind of give you a rough idea of where I was as an artist and what I was doing. Like uh, here's a drawing. This character is not mine. It is for someone on DeviantArt uh, and I cannot remember who they are, but I know the character is a ferret. And I remember drawing this and I really liked how it came out because I'm used to only drawing cats, but I drew a ferret here and I don't really know if it looks like a ferret, but close enough, right? It's not a cat, so he's thinking about Pokemon. <laughs> really short arms and whatnot. This one's with colored pencil. I did not have a lot of access to very expensive art tools at the time. That was just kind of the way it was when you were a little little middle schooler. Uh, I could have done digital, which is the way I was doing my art, but um, I didn't, I was using, the way I was doing my digital art this entire time was with a mouse. And I didn't want to do that anymore. I, I wanted to have a, a tablet and eventually I will get a tablet, but I switched back to tr traditional. Not only because uh, I, I thought my traditional art was better, but also because I didn't have a drawing tablet, I was drawing with a mouse. So yeah, it was probably was better. But anyway, here's a drawing and yeah, it's still furry art. I definitely knew what a furry was here. And in 2013, I went to my first furry convention. So I definitely knew what I was doing when it came to furry art. I went to my first furry convention in 2013. It was called, um, it was Fur Affinity United in, I think it was in Whippany, New Jersey, which is not that far from where I was living. Lucky me. But it doesn't exist. Does it exist anymore? Does Fur, I don't know if Fur Affinity United is still a convention, but it, it was a convention in New Jersey at some point. And I know that they moved to maybe Maryland or something. And since then it's been just like there's no furry convention that's close to where i live that was the one that was close <laughs> anyway furry conventions are fire you should go to one if you haven't they're really fun so here's this character again uh i think their name is still miss remix which would lead me to believe that she's female here but the character is not that female at all anymore or even at the time look at my sweet signature bro Woo! yo check that out damn um i scanned these too on my dad's scanner and then put them on my computer they the scans are actually not that bad 
it's kind of it's a pretty HD. I'm surprised that the file has like uh, survived the times like that. But this is a scan, and it's still on my old DeviantArt. I'm pretty sure. So I always had like this iPod on this character and these headphones. And eventually that changes to something else, which I don't know if it's in this folder. It's not. It might be in a future folder. Um, I don't know why the files keep opening on my other monitor, but I'll bring it over for y'all. Uh, this is a character called Super Cat, and yeah, that's about that. <laughs> that's all there is to it. He's a cat that's super, and yeah, he's just a black cat, and he's got a cape. And that's what makes him really super. And I used to draw him a lot when I was a kid. And then kind of fizzled out as a teenager drawing him. So... I think my art's getting better here. It's hard, it's hard to say, but if you look at this year's art compared to the last year that we looked at, it's definitely better, no doubt. <laughs> but sometimes it's kind of hard to, like, see that. Alright. Okay, well, we're almost there. We're almost to 2015, which is where I will stop. And the reason why I will stop is because um, I'm probably not going to cover all of these since 2021 and 2020 just happened. But at, once we get to 2016 in the next video, it's like in a complete tonal shift. Like, completely shifts tonally. So I don't want to, like, uh, get there yet, but... We'll do 2014, which actually has more art than the last folder. Uh, some of these drawings are... Uh, I don't know, messed up. But it doesn't matter because you kind of get the gist anyway from what you see here. And I think it goes back to front again. Oh, good, it finally opened on, <laughs> on this page. Um, yeah, Asexual Sylveon. <laughs> I don't know when Asexual Awareness is, but... It was happening when I drew this. It was happening and I drew this drawing and I still really like it. And one thing to note is that I'm digital again. Not only am I digital again, probably on GIMP. No, I don't know if I'm still drawing on GIMP. It could have been paint tool sigh at this point, but um, I'm using, I'm shading with a multiply layer. Yay! Woo! Look at that, yo. I actually don't know if I'm using a multiply layer. I assume I'm using a multiply layer to shade in uh, the areas that I did shade because I think I used a black multiply layer. So a one step forward, two steps backwards, or maybe two steps forward, one step backwards because shading with black is not desirable at all you don't really want to do that but obviously when you're just learning digital art you think black is the way to make things look darker and that's what you use to shade very commonly so I did shade with black here but I think it is on a multiply layer so I'm learning but also I'm not learning and whatever I, I did not know what a stabilizer pen tool is either you can see my lines are kind of shaky it's because i didn't know what a stabilizer was when you just start out with digital art these things are so foreign to you but i am extremely grateful that i came back to digital art at this point in my life because digital art is so essential to the art world right now and me having the chance to learn it when i was that young is just awesome because at the time digital art was just starting up like it was just starting to become a public popular way to create your art and for me to hop on the bandwagon when i was like 13 14 years old i mean i'm very lucky to have been able to learn digital art when i was a kid there's a lot of room for mistake and failure when you're a kid and i made a lot of mistakes and i failed a lot of times and i learned a lot so if you ever wonder why I'm so knowledgeable about digital art mediums, it's because I started very young doing digital art and I have kind of latched onto that knowledge as an adult and I'm, I'm constantly growing in that knowledge. But I'll, I'll open up the next piece while I keep talking about this subject in particular. I think this is an important subject to talk about, digital art and starting to learn digital art. This drawing right here is, I did use a multiply layer here, uh, probably white, I would assume, to do the highlighting. And 
I don't know, maybe I learned how to use the stabilizer tool here. It kind of looks like it. My lines are a little less shaky, and this is a character that is not mine. It's for someone else, so very cool. Uh, digital art, when you're doing, when you're learning it as an adult, it can be very difficult. And I was surprised to come here to SCAD at school. I'm not... I'm in, I'm in Savannah College of Art and Design right now, I'm in my dorm, I attend the classes, and I'm very surprised frequently by how many of my peers don't know how to use digital art mediums yet. And a lot of people my age had the same experience that I did, grew up using um, a computer and exploring digital art software as a kid, but not so many other people had the privilege to do so or just did it in general just even thought about it so uh a lot of my anatomy is getting better here <laughs> but this character is not mine it's for someone else and uh i really like i i think i'm improving here pretty quickly as a as a little teenager figuring things out digitally you know there's a lot of space to fail and i i would watch YouTube tutorials to no end on how to use Paint Tool SAI and GIMP and those were the two software that I was using the most at the time. Paint Tool Sci slash SAI and GIMP were the software I was kicking around with and they're still available. Paint Tool Sci, I know a lot of people still use it. GIMP, I don't know what happened to GIMP. Is it still around? Is it? I know it's still around but I don't know if people still use it uh, professionally. I would say probably. Yeah, so I changed the character's name to Oops and lost the iPod and switched to a bow tie. This is, I mean, this character will continue to develop over time and I still draw them occasionally. And yeah, it's a, it's been a character of mine for a very long time. So I'm shading here. I don't know what the, uh, it was up with this black. And uh, something that also occurred here is that I discovered the airbrush tool, which if you don't know a lot about the airbrush tool, perhaps you're not a digital artist or you forgot. Uh, the airbrush tool is the downfall <laughs> of so many digital artists in, when they first start out. The airbrush tool and I, I love the airbrush tool now. I, it's one of the tools that I use the most frequently in my art. But you would never tell because I use it in such a way that it helps me shade a specific uh, way. But the airbrush tool and I have a very troubling past. We went from, uh, I guess, like friends to enemies to lovers. I, is that is that the proper uh, term, literarily? You know, whatever. But anyway, yeah, friends to enemies to lovers with the airbrush tool. Here I just discover it and I'm like, wow, that's a really cool, interesting, and easy way to shade. And here it's not so bad, but uh, I think when I go over you're gonna start seeing eventually in some of these pieces where it does go wrong or perhaps I don't have those drawings in here and you will never see it but shading with the airbrush tool can be uh, kind of dangerous because it could really muddy up your drawing this was a drawing for my friend Sam did I just out Sam by saying that I don't know but uh, I know I referenced a fursuit to draw this head, and I think that really helped me anatomically. I don't know whose fursuit I referenced. Uh, sorry if it was yours, and I posted it. But yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff here that comes out in my art more as we go on. Uh, the shading style definitely makes sense, and I really like this character design, actually. Sam did pretty well on that one, but I don't know. Uh, I'm still, I just draw a lot of furry art in this era. <laughs> and I'm on Paint Tool Sci. Uh, another program that I had was like Sketchbook, uh, what was the software? Sketchbook Pro or something? Sorry, it's opened over here. My multiply layers, I'm finally figuring them out here. I think this was the piece where I stopped multiply layers using them with black because I definitely used blue here. I'm almost certain that I used a blue, dark blue multiply layer. You watch enough YouTube video tutorials on how to do digital art better and eventually you learn that the multiply layer should not be done in black. You should really use it with a dark blue or a dark red and for starting out digital. And I still use it this way as well. So 
The techniques that I'm using here are techniques that I still use when it comes to shading, except I use the airbrush tool to sell shade now. I know that sounds like a sin, but I promise you I use it smartly. <laughs> I like to say so. Um, and I also used a multiply layer for the highlights as well. Uh, but I think I used white for that, which is not as bad of a sin as using uh, black. But we'll see where this goes, obviously. I also have no idea what this character design is from or for. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't know what this is from. Yeah, so drawings, a couple of these drawings got lost or the files, I just haven't gotten around to converting them, but I promise you just from looking at the file names that uh, they're not that important. It's probably fine that you can't see them. This is another character that's not mine. This is another one of Sam's characters. Uh, Sam and I were in a uh, freshman year of high school. We had history together. <laughs> First period. Uh, first period history with Sam and we used to draw a lot of art together and I think Sam's art style influenced my art style at the time and probably vice versa I would assume so always good to have a friend that sits next to you in class that draws the same kind of genre of art as you uh, it really helps you grow bounce off ideas I always say like if you um, know someone that has similar interests in art as you like spend some time drawing alongside them and watching their technique and observing how they do things and what kind of concepts they explore and how they problem solve their art because I think a lot of Sam's style stuck on my my furry art style as well so that's just a tip and now if you don't have friends now it's okay because the dawn of Twitch streaming is here, and I can't even begin to tell you how long, how many hours I spend watching other art streamers draw while I draw. It kind of gives you the same effect, like you sitting there and you're drawing and you're watching uh, another artist draw on Twitch, and you could bounce off ideas off of them while that's happening because it's live, and that's just fantastic, isn't it? So utilize your resources and collaborate with other artists, do art trades, and c com converse with other artists that draw similar things and learn from them and whatnot. Very important stuff. And I think that was pretty helpful when I was in high school to have Sam to help me bounce ideas off of when it came to art. Also just nice to have someone who has the same hobbies as you. <laughs> it can be kind of hard to find when you're that age. All right, this is a, uh, I think this is my first human drawing uh so if you're wondering because nowadays i don't make any furry art uh i just slapped my thigh sorry <laughs> the thigh slap sound i am wearing shorts underneath this hoodie uh so uh, nowadays i'm not a big like furry or animal artist and that's for a multitude of reasons some of which i don't really know what happened you know i just kind of dropped it out of my interests I think when I got into college, I decided that I wanted to focus more seriously on drawing and especially drawing the human figure that I kind of left and forgot about furry art. And a lot of my homework is centered around human characters that I kind of just ceased to draw furry and animal art. But this is my first human drawing. So if you're wondering how far I've come when it comes to human drawing, art, whatever. Maybe I'll post this on Twitter or something today. That'd be really funny. Uh, this is a good example as to, uh, wow, the progress of <sighs> human to uh, human. I don't even know what I was about to say there. <laughs> the progress is insane here. And this is a process. Uh, I don't know what I was doing here at all. The eyes, I still draw noses like that though. <laughs> I literally still draw noses just like this and I didn't draw arms or anything or even shoulders I just drew the head and the I don't know the gummy torso this isn't my character of course I didn't have any human characters back then and I really still don't oh open up my other monitor here's Forrester again yeah he's uh, 
he's like different now and I I like hate this design I just think it's such a mishmash of ideas that didn't work out um, I'm not too sure what this like tie is for I think this is in the beginnings of learning you know like color theory when you're just starting to learn what colors can do to each other um, in your brain it's like the weirdest sentence I've ever said but when your brain looks at colors it it reads it as different things different emotions and whatever colors instill things in your mind and um, I think I was just figuring that out here because the colors are insane um, I liked the older design better. It's just simpler and nicer. This one, I don't know. Uh, it's just a mess, isn't it? And the piercings. I would always draw characters with a lot of piercings, and I, know, I don't even have any piercings myself, so... <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but look at that full body uh, drawing. And it's not a furry drawing. I remember drawing this, and look at that airbrush tool. Woo! I don't know what I was doing with the airbrush tool, but I sure was using it a lot. Uh, this character is not mine. He is someone else's character. I say he, but I'm just that's an assumption, so I apologize if the assumption is wrong. Um, I don't know where this person is anymore. Uh, I know that I talked to them a lot on Fur Affinity. And at the time, when I was like 13, 14, 15, whatever year I started talking with them. Talking with someone on Fur Affinity automatically means that you're buddies when you're like a kid. You ought, That's how you read the situation. So I used to make a lot of people that I would chat to on the internet art. And even if the relationship wasn't that deep, <laughs> as a kid, it really mattered. It, it mattered a lot to me. It meant a lot to me when someone would chat with me on the internet. So I don't know who this is, but if you're watching this or you know them, hello? And I hope you're doing okay, because you kind of- I remember he fell off the face of the earth. Like, um, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me, it wasn't my fault this time. <laughs> and here's a- whoa. I don't know, it keeps opening over here for some reason. Here's a, a 70 watchers on DeviantArt celebration drawing. Uh, look at my shading. Oh my goodness. I really like went hard with this piece. <laughs> so I don't know what happened here. Uh, actually, it doesn't look that bad. I don't know why I'm shitting on myself so hard. I was like in high school, so. <laughs> um, yeah, some more furry art. And we're about to go into our last folder, so. I feel like I need to say something about 2014 as a year for my art. Uh, and I guess I said it best when I first started talking about this folder on my computer that thank god I went back to digital because that skill is something that I need still and will use for the rest of my life what I learned back then is essential to my career now and I'm so grateful that I that I took the time to like learn it as a kid because some when you're a kid it's really hard to get yourself to learn stuff that kind of seems arbitrary to you like they tell you as an artist that you need to learn digital, especially even at that age, you see everyone doing digital and you think like, why do I have to learn this? Uh, is it really necessary? But for some reason, I thought of it as necessary and went ahead and learned it. So good for me. And if you even have the slightest desire to learn digital art now, doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, I recommend doing it because it's not that hard. It just takes a lot of getting used to. And once you learn about like one software, you could learn every other software in a matter of minutes. Um, it did take me like a week to get really used to Clip Studio Paint, kind of like getting a new pair of glasses. But other than that, it's been really easy just using every software. Since I learned GIMP and Paint Tool SAI, and I think Sketchbook Pro, is that what it's, what it's called? I can't remember the name of it. And ever since I learned those three free, by the way, free programs, uh, I had an easier time growing and learning more art software as I went on. Eventually I left Paint Tool Sci and I switched over to Medibang. And then from Medibang, I came over to Clip Studio Paint. So if you have the desire to learn digital tools, learn them, take the time um, and learn at least one of them. 
and then you know don't don't buy clip studio paint until you ready you're used to it i recommend medibang i cannot recommend medibang paint enough or no medibang pro it's called medibang pro right or just medibang if you know fire alpaca which is an animation software uh, medibang is made by the same people that made fire alpaca it's like very similar but different so this is the last folder i'm going to be covering I would love to talk more about all of this because I feel like I have a lot to say. So I'm gonna try to spend as much time talking about what I'm trying to talk about here before we hit to 2016 in the next video since 2016 and on is a serious shift in my art tonally. Sorry, I just set off Siri when I did that. It's a serious shift in my art tonally and you'll You'll see that and I'll explain kind of why, but I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so we're just going to talk about 2015 for now when life was still okay for me and I was still drawing as I was. This drawing's really hard to see. Uh, it's, I've always had an issue drawing. Oh, I, not always. I don't really anymore have an issue drawing characters that are just dark colored, but then I did. And I think it, I remember Googling a tutorial on how to draw a character that was like had black fur because like how do you do it how do you make the line art turn up and you're supposed to use gray for the color and black for the line art but i still went too dark with the gray and thus we have this character who just looks like a big black blob unless you zoom in and squint <laughs> but yeah there's that airbrush tool and i'm using i'm playing with multiply layers a lot and i wish i didn't use airbrush so much here but i'm not going too too bad with it so i'm still learning how to use digital medium and i don't i'm not in medibang i won't be drawing in medibang until probably 2017. so don't worry about that <laughs> this is still all in paint tool sai or gimp probably not gimp anymore probably I think it's called Sketchbook Pro, but I can't be too sure. And, oh my goodness, that's quite the jump. <laughs> uh, these are all out of order, so I apologize for the stylistic jump. But here's more human art. And actually, I started drawing quite a bit of myself. This is meant to be a self-portrait. But I think I might have been too generous with how I present myself. But I really wanted to have kind of like a character to represent myself as a human in my art. And this was somewhat of a design that I went with and would continue to go with for a long time. I didn't really look like this. Maybe the nose is right and the hair is almost, oh, almost there, but not quite there. So yeah, you could kind of see I'm definitely like learning more about digital art and you could really see my line art style come out in these hair chunks like how i did the um the line art the line width is a bit nonsensical nonsensical like it's obvious that i didn't really think about where i wanted to make the lines thicker and why i wanted to make them thicker in those places but that's something that now i think about very frequently at the time, I was just think I was just experimenting with style, and I really liked doing line art. I did then, and I still do now, so... I guess I'll just keep going in this direction. I had a really uh, strong fascination with sharp, fangy teeth, so you'll see that occur a lot. This is traditional. I enjoyed using a lot of ballpoint pen and a lot of gel pen and whatnot, traditionally. Um, in my sketchbook or just on paper. It was the easiest thing to have in class with you and draw in class with. So when I was in class in high school, I'd often just sit with like a piece of paper from a worksheet or something or like in a page in a notebook. Like oftentimes this is the back of a worksheet that a teacher handed out and I started drawing on and <laughs> used the paper for. But the easiest way to do that was just to carry some pen some pens with me and i really had a fondness for ballpoint pen and still kind of do i really like ballpoint i love the way that it feels when you draw with it it's an underrated artistic medium 
This is a drawing that, I've, that I really, really, really like. And I wish I had pushed this more further. This like theme and the way I'm doing things here, I wish I had done more of it and tried, tried to do more stuff like this because it's really good. It looks really good. It's just like my best art from my high school days, probably. <laughs> My best, one of my best drawings from high school right here um, is the pizza drawing because I think I just spent time on it. I cared about the drawing and I wanted to make it look good. And I drew a background and, a, and like a, a ground, ground and background and props. And there's two characters in the shot at once. I still don't do that. <laughs> I still don't draw two people at once. You, everyone knows that. <laughs> That's a lie. Now, I've done a couple... I've done a few now multi, multi-character multi pieces. I've been trying to do more of those, but... I think it's really funny that this is, like, the best piece that I did back then. And I was definitely proud of it when I drew it, but... Um, I didn't do more of it like this. And I think partly because of mental health. I just wasn't doing too hot back then, and... My mental health only gets worse, which is why I'm not touching 2016 yet, is because as my mental health issues kind of develop and come to fruition in my life, my art also changes very dramatically. So I don't want to touch that in this video because I, you know, this will be kind of a cliffhanger then. <laughs> this folder is a cliffhanger because you'll start to see the change um, with my art, but you're not going to see the full extent of it until later. Here's Oops. This is an old reference for Oops. Um, this design is not in use anymore, but it was at the time. This hashtag up here, it's still there. It still exists. But this here, down here, that's not my username anymore. So don't visit it. I don't know who it is. It might be someone else. It might be an inactive username, but it's not me anymore on, on Instagram, so don't don't bother with it. And yeah, oh, I just closed all my tabs again. So annoying. And yeah, I'm on Instagram, by the way. <laughs> I was back then. At this point in my life, Oops was very much a representation of myself uh, in the furry community. And when I go to furry conventions and whatnot, still, I haven't gone to one in a very long time. But if I were to go back, I would still probably address myself in this manner. <laughs> I don't know. Oops is such a big part of my identity in that community. I feel like it would be weird if I didn't um, present myself as them at a furry convention. Which I have to go to one soon because I kind of miss the party aspect of them. They're really fun. Whoa! What happened? Where did I go? Oh, there I am. <laughs> So yeah, lots of drawings of Oops from this time period. Um, Oops is a really cool character. I still really like the design and the design has evolved. I just did a new drawing of new reference of Oops, but maybe I'll pull it up. If I could find it, I'll pr try to pull it up. Um, but yeah, here's Oops with some fireflies and this drawing is digital and I'm learning about digital still. There's a lot that I tried to do with this piece. I obviously went a little bit overboard with the airbrush tool, but that's okay because it happens. And I mean, look at this crazy insane shading I did um, with the fur texture. It's just nuts. I don't know how long that took, but it probably wasn't worth it because it doesn't look that good. But um, it is interesting to see me try something like that. And yeah, my lines are pretty okay. And I'm not necessarily coloring inside the lines or anything, but I did try really hard with this piece. Uh, so I don't know. Hey guys, this is pretty fun. Um, sorry, I just like got up and tried to find this drawing. I just looked at my iPad on Google Drive. I looked everywhere for it and I finally found it on my phone. So uh, here's Oops Now in case anyone was curious or cared that much about it. I just did this drawing this year. Uh, it is a new, somewhat new character design, and yeah, I really like it. I think I forgot to color these shoulder lines, but that's okay. Who really cares? Um, it was a quick reference drawing anyway. So yeah, if you were curious what Oops looks like now, this is what they look like now. And 
things have changed. I thought it would be cool to bring this up just to show you guys. Um, I still use the airbrush tool here. And actually this was supposed to be a VTuber model, but I didn't make it one. And I could still go back and do that if I really want to, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I ended up becoming a vampire instead. <laughs> so there, there's, here's oops back then. Um, and there was oops now. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. And here's a, sorry, I keep opening it in my other monitor. A draw over from the office, like a meme from the office. <sighs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I was watching The Office at the point that I drew this. It was on Netflix uh, for the first time, probably, and I drew it, and that's all there is to say, <laughs> right? So, here's a Meet the Artist. This will tell you a lot about me at the time. Uh, was Is this drawing right here? And I called myself a poostrophe! Yes. Ah, ah. So I must have just switched my username on some software or software pff, on some social media or something. I call, started calling myself a poostrophe. And yeah, that's really cool. A lot of this stuff isn't wrong anymore. I mean, is wrong now and wasn't, isn't right anymore. <laughs> my English speaking is going down the drain. Uh, so yeah, I, I start calling myself a poostrophe here, and that's really cool, and I still look like this. I actually think this drawing is more accurate now than it was back then. <laughs> I have the cross, too, but I don't have a silver cross. I think I have a gold cross now, right? Yeah, it's definitely gold. I did- I think I had a silver cross at the time, but I don't anymore. It's a gold one now. Um, yeah, I, I still look like that I, right now. Look at me right now and tell me that doesn't look like me in this very moment. It's really funny. Anyway, um, I'm even wearing the same color. That's so stupid. <laughs> anyway, uh, likes cats, video games, sleep, root beer. Yeah, so these are pretty right. Although the root beer thing, I'm really tired. I've kind of got tired of root beer. I used to drink root beer so much in high school and nowadays uh, not so much at this point when i drew this i'm a junior in high school i'm not a senior yet i am a junior and yeah um i i don't know about the sexuality gender thing uh i'd say it's kind of the same still a little bit similar to the way i am now although i would get rid of the female thing <laughs> Anyway, dislikes rude people being used, anxiety, printers, and the smurfs. Yeah. That's still kind of facts. I like how they're so, like, very serious things, like being used and anxiety, and then printers. Um, very funny. Introvert is not correct. I'm definitely not an introvert. I'm definitely, like, an ambivert. Or I'm, I, so, I usually say that I'm introvert because I have that, like, need for quiet time and, like, time alone with myself they say that introvert is when you need time by yourself to recharge and extrovert is when you need time with other people to recharge and i i so i would say i'm an introvert but i'm definitely ex i'm not extroverted i'm definitely an outgoing introvert and i am not a night person anymore i am a morning person now um that changed after i got a job during the pandemic and I started waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, six, seven o'clock in the morning to go to work. But I can't stay up late anymore. I go to bed at like 10. I went to bed at 9.30 last night and woke up at, at 10 o'clock. <laughs> the next day I slept for like 12 hours. Uh, here's another drawing of myself. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot to be said here about my human art skills. I don't really know like what what uh what i'm thinking when i'm doing this or like what's going through my mind i guess it really doesn't matter because i'm talking about pizza so i was probably thinking about pizza but you could tell i did this with ballpoint pen so i probably did this in class and yeah i just think it's pretty simple and if you're you know interested in my progress as an artist uh 2016 i mean 2020 
this is 2015, but I think it was 2016 when I... It had to be 2015 when I drew this. I don't date these things wrong anymore. Anyway, 2015, 2016 um, was not that long ago. And I've improved, like, this much since then, so... Please draw. If you want to draw and you haven't started drawing, don't live your life with any regrets, mate. Like, learn now. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's like insane that no one- maybe I'll do a video on that. Like, the fact that you could start drawing at any point in your life. Uh, anyway. Here's- this is with ballpoint as well. Actually, it might be gel pen. But it is with pen. And I know I used reference for this. And it's actually pretty cool. A lot of my art style from when I was a junior and senior in high school is very based off of this kind of feeling that this drawing is giving off. So you'll see that in the next video. My art goes in a very specific direction and then it stops in, in total. It's going to be a very interesting part two to this. And I'm not going to record it now because... I don't want to, but when I do record it, you'll see just how crazy the shift is tonally, which is why I'm parting the video there. Anyway, I like this drawing. It's not bad. Uh, this is not a good drawing. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that this is like a low point of <laughs> this time period. The airbrushing is just... Poopy poopy. Uh, why did I do any of that? It's so bad. It looks so ugly. Um, I don't know what happened here and why I'm using black airbrush tool, but it looks like trash. Listen to me now. If you haven't heard this advice before or you ignored it last time you heard it, don't use a black... Just don't use black to shade, A, and then B. Don't just use the airbrush to shade. And I say that in a, cer like a certain way. Don't use the airbrush like this to shade. Please go watch my previous video. What was it? Art hacks? My art hacks video, I show how I use the airbrush tool to achieve the shading that I achieve in my drawings. And if you're interested in the airbrush tool and you want to grow with it like I did. I recommend that video that I made because I cover that there. But don't use it like this, please, God, Lord. It just makes your art look so muddy and it's sad because this piece would have been way better if I just didn't shade it probably. Or used cell shading or something. Instead it looks like this because I'm a knucklehead. Anyway. <laughs> Here is, oh, I don't know where this file is about to open, but yep, opened over here. So here's, an, here's look at this paper, bro. Look at this grid paper. Remember grid paper? I don't use that anymore. I don't, I don't take any math classes anymore, but this is a self portrait and look at the, it's all ballpoint. I'm pretty sure it's all ballpoint pen. Maybe the blue is in gel pen. And this is me and my cat Franky. And I'm playing on my DS. And I don't look, I did not look like this, but I wanted to look like this. I wanted to look like a gross, uh, stinky emo kid, but I really just look like a big freaking nerd. So, <laughs> but I would always draw myself stinky and with big teeth and uh, hella emo kid style, which I was a big emo kid, but I didn't really look like it. I, I didn't have the fashion sense or the ability to do my hair in a way that would have made me look super emo and edgy, but I did wear chokers, so that's one thing. My hair never looked this cool though, and it still doesn't. I still have the same haircut that I did back then. <laughs> I never changed my haircut. If anything, I went back to, I, I did change my haircut for a while, and then I went back to having the same haircut that I had in high school. <laughs> Except for the white chunk that I have. That's that's a recent within the past year or two All right, let's go right through um, this character is not mine. This is someone else's I I Wonder where they are. I hope they're doing okay 
because this person I did talk, I think I talked to quite frequently on Instagram and for Affinity and whatnot. And remember they were like, we, we chatted quite a bit and they were really cool. And I really liked their character and we've made, we've made art for each other quite a few times probably. And I just wonder how they're doing. I hope they're all right. And I remember they fell off the face of the earth a few times and they came back and then fell off the face of the earth again. It could just be like they don't care about social media that much and that's totally fair. But I've always really loved their character design that they have here. And I always had a fun time drawing their character because it's such a cool design. Really, it looks, I love the teeth. I loved teeth. So, and the black and the white and the blue, come on, moi. <laughs> So yeah, this I actually really like this drawing and the shading isn't that bad. The shading here is a, a, a f funny enough a technique that I still use. I haven't changed much since uh, 2016, 20, I guess this is 2015, right? It's 2015. I haven't changed much since 2015. I still use the same shading technique uh, pretty much. Uh, I'm a little bit cleaner now, but uh, the three tone is kind of something that I still shoot for. So, yeah. and I really like the anatomy of this drawing. It looks, it looks pretty good. Moving on, here's a traditional piece. And this is of a character that I, at the time, I was going on Facebook Marketplace. Not face, it, it was Facebook Marketplace, but it wasn't like open air Facebook Marketplace. I used to go onto Facebook and join like furry adoptables groups and whatnot where people would draw designs and then sell them to people on Facebook and get paid and I actually at the time made quite a uh, okay amount of money every month like just saw selling furry designs on Facebook and I wonder if that's still a an economy going on on Facebook there like furry adopt sales and whatnot I'm sure it is but I was in a ton of groups and I would always try to sell characters and I found like little to no success on Instagram selling furry adopts, but I found so much success on Facebook selling adopts and it was, it was good. It was, it was all right money and I had a fun time doing it. So yeah, this character I sold off on Facebook. This character I did not sell off on Facebook. This is a character that I had for a long time. And they have dreads, and I apologize for them having dreads, but, uh... <laughs> I did really like the look of dreads back then. I still do. Dreads look sick, but not something I would get for myself, obviously. For obvious reasons. And, but, yeah, I did have a character with dreads, and I don't draw this character anymore. He's not really a character that I've drawn probably since this year right now. But, <laughs> he's a wicker beast. I don't know if the wicker beast's... Uh, species is still around, but if they are, that's cool. He's really like off model to the species. At the time, Wicker Beast was just starting to be a thing, and I know it got really popular later, but the rules were kind of lax back then. So, yeah, yeah, character with dreads. What are you gonna say? Also, traditional. Also, really weird filter that I put on it <laughs> to give it like some kind of look. But I think these are, um, I don't, they're probably Copic markers or, no, they're probably, pr they're definitely Prismacolor. Sorry, I don't think they're Copic. And we're nearing the end here, so I'll do this one first and then I'll do the last one last. But here's the last digital drawing of, uh, of, of this video. <laughs> and I think it, it, it's a good, it, it's a good stopping place because there's a lot here to talk about when it comes to digital style. My line art is, I still have line variety or what's it called? Line weight. I still have varying line weight, which is interesting to see. And that kind of evolves over time with my art. Uh, coloring wise, I think I went for a watercolor brush for the coloring of the blues and whatnot, but yeah, I think it looks okay. I think it looks all right. I think it's all right. And I say and a lot in this video because I don't know what to say about these drawings. It's, it's good. It's not that bad. I like it. 
this character kind of I continue to draw them a little bit which you'll see in the next part of this video but I also fall off with a lot of the furry art later see so yeah, a last digital last digital piece of uh, of this year and here's anarchy who's a character of mine that I based off of the Joker from Batman uh, I drew him recently but I don't know where that drawing is so he's some kind of mutt and he smokes a lot and he's got lots of piercings and he has a bone tail and yeah that's all there is to him he's not a very interesting character design <laughs> but I I really liked him and I at the time I was I was really emo and oops my character that I usually use was not so representative of my emotion at the time so I wanted to draw a character that was really like hideous and monstrous and emo and such so I stuck with anarchy a little bit here and there he became kind of like a secondary character of mine and I would draw him quite a bit so that's it for 2015 and I will not be starting 2016 because that's scary and I don't want you guys to see that yet. But I think we'll go from 2016 to 2019. I think I'll stop there just because 2020 and 2021 are recent. I might even stop. Let's see what's in 2019. It's 2018. I'll cover, I'll, uh, I will cover 2019. I will not cover 2020 or 2021 because you guys n remember 2020, hopefully. And 2021 is this year, so why would I cover that? <laughs> I'm not going to. But I, I hope you guys liked that and I'll give you guys a sneak peek as to why I'm not doing 2016. And one of the big reasons is because the file is massive and I don't feel like starting or even bothering yet. And yeah, that's it. So if you ever wondered what my cringy art looks like, oh, that's what it looks like. And I might take a nap before I stream on Twitch today. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed this. This is a YouTube exclusive for once I'm not uh, streaming this on Twitch or anything. Y'all saw it here first on YouTube. I'm not gonna edit this either just cause I've recorded this so many times already. And I'm just honestly done. I just want to get this out into the water for y'all. So I think I gave some pretty all right advice in this video. And it's always fun to see where artists start out and their process and their progress over time. And you could do it too. Just pick up a pencil and get started drawing or whatever and give it a try. This month is Inktober, so I'll probably be dabbling in that for YouTube. When it comes to other YouTube stuff, um, I'm going to try to continue with art classes here on YouTube and uh, more videos like this where they're not streamed on Twitch, but instead straight from the YouTube sphere. So I hope that you like that kind of stuff. And thank you so much for stopping by. If you would like to go follow me on Twitch, the link is in the description and I stream pretty frequently and I always stream my art. So stop on by and come ask me as many questions as you want and hang out because I enjoy p having people over there. That's why I do it. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you all have a good rest of your day.